Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. We're going to take a look at Wild Packets Compass application. So it's as we wait for it to start, basically it's an application that we can use to take trace files such as Wild Packets or Wireshark uh, and put it into this app and it'll help us visualize the data as well as report on it. So Wireshark's pretty good at capturing the stuff and making your way through it in a detailed manner, but when it comes to visually seeing it, this really does help me quite a bit. So I stumbled across this program a little while ago and I thought it'd be worth looking at. First thing, I started it up and I noticed something. I've added my files here, my trace files, and if I go to click or double click, it doesn't seem to do anything. As I went through the, my struggles trying to open a trace file, I noticed here, this is supposed to be the entire screen, whereas it, it only comes out as a fraction of the screen. So I emailed Wild Packets back and forth over the last day or two and you know what, I got to hand it to them, they had great support considering it's a free product and it came down to this pane here. If I, if I resize this pane to the left or the right, this resizes and now if I come over here and double click, bang, there's my data. Interesting. So they're well aware of that and they're working on it, but uh, just something to know so it's not you. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is look at this tabular chart, which, uh, sorry, it's tabular table for lack of a better word. We can sort by name which we can see the IP addresses or if you do it again you'll see the entries without a name or IP address and you can just simply scroll up and down and do your thing. We can sort by packets and have the guy the big talker at the top so on. As you click on things and you put a check mark you'll notice in this graph we get these little green displays now all of a sudden bang it's gone and there it is so if you want to see how much traffic this is contributing to the trace you can do that we can also select several of them if you like so I'm going to just uncheck them so visually that's really nice to know and you can either do it from this table or if I had a pie chart up I can click on one of the slices of the pie pull out the slice and now you can see that that is displayed in our graph so I'll put that back as well as I move through uh, my graph here, you'll see the little bubble with my finger and the hover comes up and it shows me the utilization and the time with the, in this case, how many megabits per second. Well, that hover box can change depending on the units that I've got selected at the bottom. So we've got bits here, see, and now it says 6,000 bits per second. Of course, it changes this on my Y axis as well. So, and lastly, we've got our good old bar chart, which again, you can click on if you'd like. The other thing you can do is combine. So I can click on this guy, this MAC address per se, and then come over here and click on the uh, 802.1 spanning tree stuff. And now you can see spanning tree and you can see this other fellow here. Um, again, just quite intuitive and easy to use. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is right now I've got 277 nodes, 13 protocols, based on this timeline. Well, if I wanted to concentrate on a certain area, I can just drag over and highlight this range and let go. And now all of a sudden the nodes change, the protocols change, and the bytes um, and MAC addresses change depending on this window, which I can slide to the left or to the right. And if you find you've got a little too carried away, I can either zoom in or zoom out depending on what I've done wrong or right. So it's a really interesting way to look at data. Again, it's, it's, it's very usable. It's not the answer to everything. I think it's a very really neat little utility to have. Um, if I come to the bottom, I can look at a millisecond format if I wanted to, uh, but it really depends on what you're trying to do with that data. Um, milliseconds for just LAN or application baselining might be getting a little too carried away, but if you want to know what exact time that spike was, that's helpful. Now I can go back to Wireshark or whatever analyzer you have, and I can search for that time and find those packets. What would have been helpful in my opinion is if I highlighted something, maybe give me a range of the packet numbers and that would be quicker to find in my trace file. But again, you know, it's it, things uh, will flush out as people use the application. Click legend, we've got our legends here on the side. We've got averages, we've got totals, depending on what, again, what you're trying to do. And lastly, if I wanted to report on all of this, here, I'm gonna just get rid of my legend now. If I wanted to report all this, because this is what I wanted to keep and I don't want to do a screen capture, I can hit my report button, off we go, and now it's generating an HTML report with the following data. And, and there we are. So now, what's nice to know is that it remembered the exact layout of Compass, and it actually gave me a report based on this format with this range of time, 
instead of defaulting to a pre-canned report, which I thought was very, very helpful to see. So uh, all in all, it's a very helpful product. I would, I would strongly suggest it, and I hope uh, Wild Packets continues to uh, update it and improve on it. Thanks.